Hi, it's Michael Levine and welcome to my channel. Um, today I'm going to continue on with the theme of the origin of the five pocket gene. Um, today in particular I'm going to address the Wrangler 13MWZ which is their uh, first make of a five pocket um, specifically geared for uh, the rodeo uh, western wear market. Um, so the story starts back in uh, the 1900s, early 1900s. Um, a 27-year-old button sewer working in a factory that closed down starts his own overall uh, company um, and his name is C.C. Uh, Hudson. So he starts a company out, he uh, eventually becomes successful, calls the company uh, Blue Bell Overall Company. In 1926 that company is then bought by a bigger workwear company uh, Big Ben Manufacturing, and they actually keep the name Blue Bell Overall Company. 1943, now uh, almost nearly 40 years into this company's history, um, Blue Bell buys a company, another workwear company called Casey Jones. And Casey Jones has in its uh, inventory of labels a label Wrangler that they don't use that much. 1947, uh, the Blue Bell Company hires a Polish tailor. Um, his name is Ben Lichtenstein, but he's very well known by the name Rodeo Ben. Uh, Rodeo Ben is charged with creating a pant designed specifically for that cowboy, that work, that uh, rodeo type um, person. He comes out with their first pant, the 13 MWZ. At the time, it was called actually 11 MWZ. Um, Later, they changed that 11 to a 13 because the garment was actually using a 13 ounce denim at the time. Um, in 1963, Wrangler uh, moves the fabric to a 14 ounce broken twill denim. And uh, actually, if you punch the weight of the fabric, you'll find it's over 14 ounce. It was sold, and remember in those days, we didn't have any type of washing, so all jeans were sold rigid. Um, so 14 and a half ounce uh, rigid denim was quite a durable product. Um, so anyways, just to cover a, a few of the, the items uh, before we move on to the actual construction, uh, what is Broken Twill and why is Wrangler use it uh, specifically for this pant? So one thing was that it gave it a little bit of softness. The other thing is it prevented the legs from twisting, which was a common problem at the time. Uh, regular twill fabrics because of the twisting of the yarn and the weave uh, rotating in the same direction as you wash the garment it actually the legs tended to twist the side seam would come up onto your knee uh, when you're wearing the pant and would cause chafing so the broken twill kind of compensated a little bit for that um, added a little bit of softness to the fabric as well and uh, so just to understand a little bit about what the meaning is of broken twill and regular twill. So a regular twill is typically a three by one weave, meaning that you go uh, under three yarns and the warp, the, the fill fabric. So the warp are the long yarns going down the length of the garment. And then you have the one that you weave across those, uh, if you can imagine like having guitar strings. So as you go across those guitar strings, you're gonna go over one, under three, over one, under three. So if you started off at over one, under three, then the next one you would go under one, over one, under three, un over one, under three, continue. And then you would go uh, under two, over one, and then three by one across. And that would give you the, the illusion of kind of a, a twill or an angular angled line going down the garment and um, that's what we call regular twill and to show you an example of that uh, it's easier seen on the back of the fabric um, and you can kind of see here these lines going kind of at an angle this way so that's your twill lines those bluish uh, lines um, and so that's a regular three by one denim twill. So bro broken twill, how it differs is basically on a regular twill, you're gonna go, like I said, your starting point first, you start at over one, then your next one, your next 
yarn going across will go under one over one then the one below that will go under two over one and then under three over one and then it repeats starting off with over back to over one or back to zero uh, so you get that kind of movement going this way what happens with a broken twill is you're gonna go over one initially then you go over one under one on under one over one and, and then under two over one and then you start back at the beginning before you ever hit that three so you end up with a bunch of lines that seem to go in almost like a sideways w um so not to be confused with a herringbone which would look like w's going across um and here is a broken twill you can see um kind of how that looks so you get a bunch of short twill lines like this and kind of almost in columns so if you can see that so that's a broken twill so anyways let's switch over to the overhead camera and go over some of the construction because one of the things that i find so uh interesting about the vf jeans um vf being the parent company of uh, contour, contour ohms, Wrangler Lee, etc. Um, since they manufacture their own jeans, they're very uh, aware of efficiencies and reduction in labor. And so there's a lot of things incorporated into these jeans that as independent factory owners, we don't always get to do because the way the garment gets made is dictated to us by the um, manufacturer and they don't always have our best efficiency interest in mind um, so anyways uh, we'll switch over to the overhead camera and I'll show you some of those uh, details and um... okay so the Wrangler pant construction wise let's take a quick look at it and go over some of the details so typically for those of us that have our factories we know you single needle set the front pocketing flip it over and top stitch it you see Wrangler does this all in one step. They use a two needle machine here with a folder and then they use a, a taping on the inside to cover where the pocketing and the fabric join. Uh, so no need to set, turn and top stitch. It's one operation instead of two. Um, they failed the out seam. This is one, uh, looks like single needle because they use a navy thread. And here you can see it on the bottom hem filled out seam but they do five pocket uh five thread overlock inseam right in the past up until this the production of this pan so in the 1940s um companies were actually putting rivets on the fly and wrangler was one of the ones who actually went with a soft tack and um promoted that because i guess the cowboys people as such uh, we're apprehensive about having a metal tack there uh, in that particular region of the pan. Um, the <coughs> front pocket facing is set with a three thread, a triple stitch overlock. Um, you can see here on the back of the pocketing, the three rows of stitching. So once again, it's set with efficiency in mind, uh, just all in one step. You don't need to overlock the facing and then set it again. On the side with the watch pocket, um, you can see first of all, the watch pocket is set with a chain stitch, the hem, and then the hem is done chain stitch. It's a narrow gauge two needle machine. And then uh, the facing is set to the pocketing also with that same overlock stitch with the three rows. Um, the watch pocket goes all the way across the full width of the facing so uh, it saves you money by not having to put another rivet in when typically when your watch pocket is smaller and uh, also it saves you having to stitch that watch pocket down to the facing so once again a lot of thought in how to save just a few cents uh, when you're producing millions of jeans in your own factory um, all those considerations actually add up on the back of the pant so you have a felled seat and a felled gilt, which is normal uh, for any jean nowadays. Um, you have two needle gauge stitching going all the way around the back pocket. So in the days prior to the automatic double needle machine, uh, the automatic pocket setting machines, 
where now um, we usually typically flare out here at the top. This was set with a two needle, uh, regular two needle machine. <clears throat> and uh, so two needle, same width all the way around, actually saved money at the time. Um, Wrangler is one of the few companies you will see that will actually rivet the back pockets because of liability issues that it could damage. Uh, something that you sit on like a couch or uh, your car seat. You have the Wrangler uh, W there. Um, once again, the back pocket is set with a two needle chain stitch machine, all done to save money. Uh, one of the things that's not cost savings, actually costs them more money, is you'll see five le belt loops across the back. This is a 30 inch waist, 33 inch waist. So uh, typically five pocket jean would have five loops at least up until size say 38 or 40. Uh, this one has seven, five across the back, one on the front. Um, and that's because, you know, the cowboys who are wearing those belts 100% um, of the time. So this keeps the pant from <clears throat> dipping down and the <clears throat> where the belt would rub against the skin. Um, that's basically it, the construction of the pant. Uh, one thing that I would like to point out, uh, I thought at one time Wrangler had a felt inseam as well as a felt outseam. And uh, I would think that that would be an important feature that I would love to see come back uh, if I were the manufacturer or wearer in particular this pant. And I could tell you why I pointed this out in Levi um, pant as well. Almost knocked the camera over. But basically, you could see here at that bottom hem where the the seam is rolled towards the back. The inseam is rolled towards the back when you set your hem. Um, you can see it a little bit better here. Here's your seam. It's folded towards the back. It's caught in the hem. It has to stay that way. And that is correct. That's the way it should be. But what happens is just within a few inches up, upwards, then the seam twists and goes towards the front. I don't know why it does it, but it's going to twist in any wash, um, probably a, a couple of times. And what that does is it causes a bump right there at that point where it rolls over. And you can kind of see what's going on right here as it curves from one side to the other side. Um, here on a cowboy cut pant, you're wearing boots with it, you're not going to ever feel that. But what happens is coming along the same thing it flips one more time right here at the inside thigh and then coming down on the other leg once again you have that same flipping happens here at the knee so uh those two places the knee and the thigh especially in a swim cut pant like this one is going to be and if you're a cowboy riding a horse sitting in a saddle those points are going to be pressed up against your leg and are going to cause chafing and that's why it's so nice to either come back and top stitch the seam or uh, in Wrangler's case for efficiency you would fell uh, the seam which is the same thing cost the same labor almost as the overlock would cost so anyways uh, that's pretty much your construction of the pant everything is done for efficiency uh, Wrangler has one of their own uh, zipper making machines actually in their plant where it sets the zipper to the front fly, cuts it, puts on the slider and the staple all in an automated machine. It's pretty cool. I've seen it once. Uh, I've been in their factory. You see when they close the end of the band, they uh, sew off similar to Levi all the way off to the end. But then they fold that whole thing inside and it actually, it causes... You can see right there on the inside, that bump there and that bump there. That's where the, the stitch seam is folded inside. And then when they sew the end of the band, they only sew from here to here. They don't actually come across and catch the, the chain stitch to prevent it from unsewing because the chain stitch is folded inside. So it's not going to get, uh, uh, it's not going to unravel. So anyways, um, a little bit what we would probably not call a good quality end but it's a secure way to finish the pant and you can see it here on the other side the underside of the band as well um, and here you can see another reason why I'm going to return these pants uh, there's a hole there and there was a fabric flaw coming down the, the front leg 
which way was that right here I don't know if you can make that out but there's a fabric flaw coming right down here the center of the leg so anyways um, efficiently made Wrangler pants The Wrangler 13 MWZ, Indigo, five pocket jean, uh, started in 1947. Uh, definitely a cowboy fit, um, which I think is uh, perfect for the purpose of the pant. Uh, probably one of the original slender or slim fit garments. Uh, you know, there's no extra fabric that's gonna get caught on anything while you're trying to work. Um, although it is a little tight, uh, even throughout the leg and that most definitely the, the seat, but uh, very nice fit uh, for what it is. Um, you can see the bottom, but it's a little wide in the leg, and of course, that's to go over boots. Um, if you'd like to manufacture a five pocket jean, or even a denim overall, uh, like the original Bluebell overall, something similar to this, um, I work for Aurora Investment Global. We have 22 factories in Vietnam. Our factories manufacture these products and a multitude of other type of things, all the way from active wear to tailored clothing. And uh, we would love to talk, discuss with you about uh, becoming a supplier to you. Uh, if you like the information I present to you today and you'd like to see future videos from me, please scoot over to YouTube and uh, subscribe to my channel there and click on the notification bell. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. In the meantime, uh, continue to dress smart. Take